there, this is Miriam from Pain Outside the Box. And today I'm going to be sharing with you an effective technique to help you manage your pain flares and also overcome pain completely eventually. So this technique is known in psychology as paradoxical intent, and it was first tested on people who suffered from panic attacks. So if you know anything about panic attacks, it's not a very nice sensation to have. You feel that your heart is beating really fast, that you're gonna get sick, and it's a panic attack, basically. And it doesn't feel nice at all. And obviously, when we feel something like that, we definitely want to make it stop, right? However, when they tested this technique, what they asked participants to do was to actually ask their heart, invite their heart to beat faster. It was to actually invite their panic attack to get worse if it wanted to. And it sounds really, really counterintuitive, but surprisingly, these participants managed to overcome their panic attacks quicker. Their panic attack lasted less and they found it to be a very helpful technique to dealing with panic attacks. So the same thing can actually be applied to chronic pain, especially if you suffer from pain flares that you find scary or really frustrating or annoying. So what I'm suggesting here, if you apply the technique of paradoxical intent to your um, pain, you would be actually inviting it to get even stronger rather than trying to push it away. Now, why does this work? It works because if you are inviting your symptoms, whether they're like anxiety symptoms or painful symptoms, if you're inviting them in, you're actually telling your brain indirectly that these symptoms are not so scary after all. And eventually, the brain registers this idea. Now, if you know anything about the mind-body connection, the pain that we experience is filtered by the brain. So how much pain we actually experience, whether we're really injured or whether we have another mind-body condition like chronic pain, is actually filtered by the brain. So pain intensity doesn't always correlate to the level of injury or whatever else you might be suffering from, but it actually is determined by your own personal experience. So if you perceive something as highly threatening and highly scary, then the brain is able to generate even more pain, especially at the site that you're scared of, at that part of the body and where you have that concern. So the reason why paradoxical intent works is that as you are inviting the symptoms to get stronger, even getting curious about how strong they can get, you are actually doing the opposite of what you usually do. You are actually dialing down the fear okay, or the frustration that usually accompanies your symptom manifestation. And instead, you're telling the brain that this is a curious thing, that you're actually going to be playful about this. And obviously, this is what the brain registers. The brain registers the idea that this is not such a huge threat after all. And if it's not such a huge threat, then why continue to fire the pain response? Why continue to fire the anxiety response? So this is how it works, really. It's kind of a trick on the brain itself to teach it that the sensations that you're feeling, although they might be painful or uncomfortable, you can always decide to get curious about them and therefore they're not as scary as you thought they were. So how do you do this technique? So ideally, you employ this paradoxical intent technique as you start to feel your symptoms get stronger. Or ideally also as you start to feel those symptoms intensify. So if you find yourself noticing that your pain is intensifying and you're getting scared, or upset about it, that is actually the moment when to invite your symptoms in. That's the moment when to tell your pain, oh, here you are, would you like to get stronger? Come on, let's see how strong you can get, okay? And I know it sounds counterintuitive, but just by saying that, you can then stay a little bit longer with the experience, and this need only take a few seconds, so you're going to invite your symptoms in, you're going to get curious about how strong they can get, but just for a few seconds. 
Typically, if you get really good at this technique, you will find that the sensation or the pain will intensify for a few seconds and there will be like a limit, okay? And then it will decrease. So this is how it typically works. If you find that the sensation is extremely unbearable, okay, then maybe that is not the time to practice the paradoxical intent technique. Maybe that's the time to move around a little bit, suit yourself, make a cup of tea, okay? So the paradoxical intent technique is way better applied when you're starting to feel the pain come on, when it's still relatively tolerable, and if you are in a position to actually observe your pain. If you're having a highly reactive day or a really bad day, well, maybe that's not the time. However, it gets easier and easier as you get used to this technique. And it can be way better than meditation when it comes to chronic pain. Because when we meditate, although we might relax ourselves for a short time, we may still be concerned about the pain. We might still meditate from the intention of lowering the pain. So in a sense, we might still be fighting the pain, right? And that is resistance. When we're trying to do something to fight off the pain directly, then we are resisting it, which means that we are to a certain extent fearing it, not wanting it, and the brain registers that threat. It registers the pain as a threat. So with this technique, what you're doing is actually the opposite. You're teaching the brain, you're rewiring the brain to perceive that sensation as less of an issue, as less dangerous. And by getting curious about it, by inviting it in, you are making it less likely for the pain to last. Because if the brain registers that the pain is not dangerous, then it need not continue to fire that response. Then eventually it will kind of download the idea that, hey, this body part, this pain, this shoulder pain, this leg pain, whatever it is, isn't such a huge issue after all. And your whole perception will change. So this technique takes practice. Be patient with yourself. I just suggest practicing it just for a few seconds, okay? Don't, don't just sit with your pain, inviting it to get stronger and stronger for like an hour. And that's not how it works. So just take a few seconds as you feel the pain creep up on you and just allow it to unfold as much as it can, right? After that, even though there is still a little bit of pain, just get on with your day, get on with your tasks, okay? With the next thing on your to-do list. Don't linger there um, and don't linger especially with any negative thoughts that might crop up, right? So that's it. That is the technique of a paradoxical intent. So it's an amazing technique that can be employed for various issues that, that you might be suffering from. And yes, if you try it out, feel free to share your experience in the comments. And if you'd like more pain reprocessing techniques, I remind you that I have my own pain reprocessing program, which teaches you this technique and others to help you overcome chronic mind-body pain. And with that said, I'll leave you to try out the technique for yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.